Good afternoon, disaster and emergency management, business continuity and crisis management leaders. Uh, I My name is Brad Eisen. This is Hazardscape Live. And today we are going to be talking about the YEG disaster dash. And if, if you haven't heard already, uh, I'm going to be donating $100 if I get up to 100 comments or more on this feed so be sure to comment uh and and we'll get some we'll get some money flowing so i'd like to introduce chaka zimyimba if i didn't get that right he could tell me uh chaka is an emergency management professional based out of edmonton i worked with him at the alberta emergency management agency for very uh, for a very long time, he I really got to know him when he came in to the GIS uh, team at the Provincial Operations Center during the Fort McMurray fires in 2016. He's also been in the Provincial's Recovery Program and recently did uh, the pandemic planning, was on the pandemic planning team for the government of Alberta. And now today he is the manager of rapid response for the Red Cross. So let me introduce Chaka. Welcome. Thanks, Brad. Thanks for having me. How are you? Uh, I'm I'm doing very well, thank you. So we are uh, we're connected in today. If you're just joining us, if I get a hundred comments or more, I'm donating a hundred dollars to the YEG Disaster Dash. So Chaka, why don't you give us uh, an intro on on YEG Disaster Dash? Yeah, totally. So the YEG Disaster Dash is happening uh, next week, uh, 14th of October, and it's a fun virtual uh, 5K run or walk uh, where when you sign up through the running room, uh, the money uh, that you use to sign up is going towards establishing a bursary. Uh, and the bursary is going to be called the Diversity and Inclusion in Emergency Man Management Bursary uh, for Black and students in the first year of the uh, emergency management diploma program at Nate. Awesome. And so where uh, where did this idea come from? And I've got the website up right now, uh, yegdisaster-.ca if you want yeah. to visit and donate. So where where did uh, where did the idea come from? Well, you know, uh, earlier on this summer, uh, a, a friend of mine um, who works in emergency management, uh, her name is Rosemary, shout out to her if she's watching, uh, invited me to uh, participate in a similar dash. I would love to say this idea is uh, a new idea, um, but it's not. Uh, I copied and pasted it uh, from, from the US. So there's okay. the Bill, Bill Anderson uh, dash uh, that happens in the US. Um, and the money that's collected from that dash is uh, put forward towards um, African-American communities that have experienced disasters. Bill Anderson uh, was a uh, scholar uh, and researcher, an African-American scholar and researcher in disaster and emergency management. So uh, I joined up uh, with my uh, colleague, Rosemary, and a few of her, her colleagues as well. Uh, and because this year it was virtual, they opened it up to you know, anyone who wants to join. Uh, and I thought, hey, why can't we do something similar here and uh, and contextualize it to our situation here in uh, in Edmonton? And that's how the idea was born. Uh, I had a few discussions wow. with some people, and uh, here we are. And boom! And so you're doing this in conjunction. the The bursary is going to sit with Nate, the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology. They run a disaster and emergency management uh, accredited post secondary program. Yeah. And you're also partnered with who else? So we have the uh, Council for Canadians of uh, African and Caribbean Heritage. I used to sit on the board of this organization, uh, and they are particularly interested in, um, they run tutoring programs um, for uh, kids of uh, African and, uh, and Caribbean heritage on Saturdays. Uh, they also run a Black History Month um, Jeopardy style quiz called Afro Quiz, okay. uh, which has become yeah. quite popular uh, in the city. And so I partnered with them as our community partner. Uh, they are doing a lot of the, the hard work in terms of uh, being the banker for us before we collect. So all the funds will come through this organization. And once we have the lump sum, we will then transfer that money over uh, to Nate. 
Awesome. Okay. And the running room is on here. What, what, uh, how did you get connected in with the running room? They are a uh, Edmonton based company, very active in the community as well. Yes, yes, definitely. The running room is uh, well known in Edmonton for putting on runs. Uh, and this year they went virtual. And so when I saw that opportunity, I got in touch with them and said, hey, I got this idea. Is this something you can support? And so the running room has been fantastic because you sign up through the running room. They collect all the information that they need in terms of the run. Uh, when you sign on, uh, you'll get a virtual uh, a virtual bib. Um, you know, if it was a, a run where you're doing it actually in person, you would get a bib to put on, on, on your shirt. But this time you get a virtual bib that the running room helped me create, uh, which users can then um, post onto social media after completing their run to say, hey, I okay. participated uh, in this. So the running room is our is our race partner. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And and so if you're just tuning in, um, if if you throw down a comment, if we get to a hundred comments, Hazardscape is donating a hundred dollars to YEG Disaster ja uh, Dash. So make sure you provide a comment. Uh, now I wanted to show uh, we've got his uh, we've got your website up, mm -hmm. and. I'm going to assume you did that art because I know you are an artist by trade. Did, did you do that? <laughs> Is that yours? Uh, you know what? I, I did create that, yes. Um, but I use a lot of digital tools. I use Canva, and Canva has a lot of templates uh, yeah. for that. But I did create that, yes. You did. Okay, I figured I figured that. So that <laughs> that's one of the things I've, I've always liked. Um, you have brought creativity into disaster and emergency management. Uh, you know, through different mediums, especially at AEMA, you had, I think, donated paintings to silent auctions uh, for mm -hmm. United Way and things like that. So uh, I, I appreciate that you bring your art and creativity into a lot of what you do uh, in in this field, because I, I sincerely think it's something that we need a little bit more of uh, to help us get along. So I, I wanted you. to make sure. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit more. What uh, what can people do other than donating? What what can people do to to support this cause? Yeah. So um, the ways you can support the cause. So you can sign up to to run, of course, or to do the walk. Um, you can check out our Instagram page at yeg underscore disaster dash, um, okay. and you can share the word. Uh, and follow us on social media. So on social media, uh, especially as we can, kind of come towards next week, we're gonna be posting a lot of uh, different um, race or rather runs that you can do. Um, so okay. I've been tracking different 5K runs in Edmonton and I'll post them. So if people wanna run those routes, they can follow those routes. Um, if you are an organization, uh, there also is a, a space for organizations to, to, to donate. Um, so if you go to our website and you click on the donate tab, this one here, yep. Yeah, on the donate tab is also um, uh, some information on how organizations can participate. So uh, what we have is different sponsorship levels, uh, ranging from bronze to platinum. So if an organization donates, you know, two hundred and fifty or five hundred, they become they become a bronze, uh, gold, or diamond sponsor, and. Okay. Uh, that information, their, their logos will then be posted on our on our recognition uh, page. And so it's a good way okay. to have different organizations um, get involved. So if you scroll up, uh, you will see that we have a uh, donor recognition page and that's where organizations can actually um, participate. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. right there, exactly. And awesome. uh, we, yeah, so we hope to raise funds, yes, through the run, but also through donations from different organizations. Fantastic. And yeah. you've got a partners page on there. Um, where else? You're on Face. You've got a Facebook page. We have a Facebook group. And it's um, a Facebook group. Okay, Facebook group. Yep. We have a Facebook group. We don't have a Facebook page yet. What I'm hoping to do okay. is, um, you know, because this was created pretty much in the last two months, and uh, the response okay. has been fantastic. Uh, once we're done with this, we'll continue fundraising up until December, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but once we're done with this, I'm hoping to then go back and uh, refine some of the tools and uh, be able to be ready to have to do this again uh, next year and make it an annual event. Okay. So the goal, long-term strategy is make it an annual event and the, the donations, donations will constantly feed into the bursary at Nate. Exactly. 
Okay, awesome. And um, I know we're get, starting to get a couple of questions. Sounds like uh, a good program. Someone's asking if you have a mentor program. Hmm. Um, I, I don't know if you've got that set up no, yet. No, but I can, I can speak to that a little bit uh, sure. just in terms of where this could potentially go. Um, so the whole idea uh, is to uh, begin to uh, open doors and provide um, opportunities uh, for racialized communities to participate and become professionals uh, in this field. And part of that is mentorship. So what I'm hoping in the long run, as this uh, initiative becomes more established, and as we get more partner organizations, if we can have organizations that are willing to mentor um, maybe the recipient of the award and maybe part of the um, award can include a six week mentorship program with an organization or you know, okay. uh, an internship program. That's something that I'm hoping we can develop in the long run as well. Absolutely. So at the moment, no, we don't have one, but it's something we're thinking of. Okay. And, and if you're just tuning in, every, uh, every comment we get is worth a dollar. And if, if we get a hundred comments, I'm throwing in a hundred dollars to YEG disaster dash. Uh, and I, you know, if you want to comment twice, go ahead. I'll take, I'll take double Z's. That's awesome. okay. <laughs> uh, so thanks, Michelle, Richard, uh, Peron from, uh, Salvation Army is thrown in so far. Thank you all very much for that. So where, what is, what is your alt, like, what's this year's definition of success for, for this year? And then how does that, where does that lead you into next year? Yeah, great, great point. Uh, great question. So in order to establish a, uh, a bursary at Nate, uh, one needs to contribute a thousand dollars to establish thousand, okay. uh, the bursary. Okay. What we're hoping to do is to raise a minimum of two thousand okay. dollars. Um, which will allow us to provide a bursary of 1,000 to a, uh, a black student and uh, 1,000 to an indigenous or first nation student. Awesome. Um, the ultimate goal is to eventually get to 10,000 yearly. 10,000 okay. will cover complete tuition um, for two students. So tuition is currently $5,000 for this program per year. Yep. So 10,000 will allow us to cover um, tuition for two, uh, for two students. If we reach 10,000 this year, fantastic. Um, but if we reach 2000, that's, I'll say, you know what, that's a great start. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And we're starting to get uh, lots of comments in here. Uh, thanks, Tobias. Uh, Francis, thank you. I think oh, we- hey, I, see, uh, I see Michael. I went to school with Michael. We were in the uh, disaster and emergency management program together. Yeah, you went to, uh, it would have been Royal Roads, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, well, I'm, I'm sure, Michael has a company uh, who, you know, wants to support this cause. So I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll probably hit up the donate page on yegdisaster-.ca. Absolutely. Awesome, Michael. <laughs> yeah, Michael runs, uh, he does consulting and he trains for ICS, Incident Command Systems. That's right. And he's uh, actually, he's got uh, some of his ICS training now virtually as well. So he's oh, uh, a big supporter of the emergency management community in Alberta and in Canada. So yeah, keep the comments coming. Every every comment that gets posted goes towards $100 uh, donation from Hazardscape. So please keep the comments rolling. Uh, and, and if you do have any questions or anything, uh, please, please bring them up. So um, obviously we're not doing, you can't do the run. Eventually we'll get to a, a physical event. You know, what's, what's your first pick for a location? I'm curious to know like where we could be running in the near future uh, live. Have you, have you picked a, a physical spot? Um, that's a great question. I, I haven't picked a physical spot. Um, I personally, a lot of running within the River Valley uh, okay. in Edmonton. Um, I live literally a block or two away from access to the River Valley through downtown uh, Edmonton. And yep. uh, there are a few really good trails um, within the River Valley, Edmonton. Oh, I think I might have lost them for a minute. I don't know if I lost them or if the feed lost you, Chaka. But we will give it a second here. Thanks, uh, Tori. It is a great initiative. Uh, thanks. Looking forward to hearing more about this. Keep posted at 
Y-E-G uh, disaster dash dot C-A. You can donate there. Uh, Chuck, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but try and uh, pop back in uh, and, and we'll get you back on here. So what I'm doing is every comment I get is worth a dollar. And I'm going to, the goal is for me to uh, donate $100 to YEG Disaster Dash. So keep the comments rolling in. And if you have any questions, please let us know. Chuck is going to try and get back on. I think he's going to try and log in in a second here. Um, you can, uh, if you're an organization or part of an organization, there are tiered levels. You can donate uh, up to $500, $750, $1,000, $1,500 more to get on the sponsorship wall of fame. So if you want, are interested in that, get your comments, uh, comments in. Here we go. We got you back. Hey, Brad. Sorry about that. Awesome. That's sure. okay. This that's the uh, that's the 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 fun of live streaming and technology. Totally. So, yeah. So you do a lot of running in the River Valley. Uh, maybe that's a possible first location. I think. Yeah, I'm totally excited for this. Um, I've got. I I I might ride my bike ten kilometers. Okay. In, awesome. In, instead of run, I'm not uh, running's okay, but I like my bike better. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, I, I'm happy for people to do, you know, whatever it is that they're most comfortable with. Personally, I'm a runner. Um, I used to be on, you know, different track and field teams uh, growing up. I ran for the U of A um, for two oh, years. okay. Yeah, so uh, in a way, this is kind of me trying to keep myself fit. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a great motivation. So what, um, what, what, did, what impact did the, the last six months just with you know the the question of diversity and and mm -hmm. the riots going on in the states like what what did that do for you to to kind of i know you talked about this idea in the past and there's the bill anderson concept in the states but did did what went on in the states and in canada and all over the world kind of help bring this to life a little bit more or were you headed that way anyway no, definitely. I think um, we are in a in a place right now um, in in North America and globally as well, where we are looking at um, you know the issues of racial inequality um, and equity uh, in access to opportunities. Um, of course, the U.S. has its own context, which is uh, definitely, I would say, perhaps more televised. Um, but in Canada, we also have uh, similar issues. So what we're seeing is uh, the spillover of what's going on in the U.S. and the conversations happening here in Canada. These conversations have been happening. Let's not, uh, you know, uh, let's get that right. They have been happening. Yeah. Um, and we've had issues, you know, we've talked about the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, for example, uh, with respect to um, our indigenous populations and First Nation communities. Um, we've been talking about, you know, police carding um, against racialized minorities, uh, especially the black communities. Um, and these things have been happening, people have been talking. The shift, what's happened now is that uh, we have a majority of, of people um, who tend to be Caucasian now actually actively listening. Um, yes. And I think the, the pan pandemics almost lead to, to, to social innovation and, and, and uh, protests. In, and if you look historically, they do tend to, to push people uh, towards realizing some of their inequalities because the pandemic exposes all of those things. When people are forced to stay at home, when people are, are losing their jobs, when people are on edge, when we're all at home, um, watching our TVs, uh, you know, it all kind of comes together. So that's really, in my opinion, what has caused this sudden explosion um, in terms of attention to this. In Canada, what we're seeing is a lot of attention with respect to Indigenous communities, as well as what does this mean for us in our professions? And that's the direction that I, I have taken this. Um, what does this mean for, yeah. for me in my profession and the Black and Indigenous communities in my profession? Yeah, I think that that's an important question, especially for 
people in emergency management, crisis management on the corporate side, uh, business continuity, because you know we're meant to design programs and services that are are for whole of society. For you know, in Canada, being a, a melting pot. Like we've got to cater to so many different cultures, languages. If we're not paying attention to the needs of those groups, we're not doing our job. And I know as like a, you know, a Caucasian Canadian, I was raised in a system that taught you to be racist, uh, especially towards indigenous people, because, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. over and over time, again, all you'd hear is they were just drunk, lazy uh people and that 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 it was just said without even thinking about any of mm -hmm. the the generational trauma uh and the the way that that actually came to happen uh over a very long period of time yeah and so yeah for me personally it took quite a bit of effort and energy to kind of break away from that thinking to try to understand how I can use my privilege uh, as, as a white Canadian growing up within this system to kind of help uh, marginalized societies. And so I'm, you know, I'm, I, I ask politicians a lot on social media how they're using their power and privilege. None of them ever answer. <laughs> um, I, you know, it, it's kind of annoying that they, they never talk about it, but uh, I'd, I'd really like to to see more people sort of take that time and just reflect on their own upbringing and how they can make changes within their own family to you know just like yeah we're all different but that doesn't mean you have to hate each other <clears throat> right <clears throat> like there there's no reason why that has to has differences have to occur there you know and in, in there are ancient tribes in papua new guinea that the first rule is if you happened upon somebody uh that you didn't know your first rule engagement was to try and find a connection through your ancestry so you didn't kill each other so right, you could create right. that commonality uh b before you started like pulling up the spear <laughs> and, and throwing them at each other and i think that's totally cool if people just spent some time talking and listening uh maybe there would be a lot less violence and hate in our world you know, um, you, you raise a really good point when you talk about, you know, your personal journey on this and, you know, going to school as a child. Um, no one can blame you for the way you were brought up. You know, you didn't choose to be born, uh, you know, in, in the way you were and the processes you went through. But the question is, what do we do about that now, today? Exactly, um, yeah. I was part of, a, I attended a conference a few weeks ago uh, by the Alberta Council for Global Cooperation. And the theme of the conference was, uh, uh, unlearning and relearning. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of unlearning that has to be done. And sometimes it can be a painful process. Um, and then once we've unlearned, going through the process of relearning um, what, uh, what needs to be relearned in order to uh, advance this issue of racial equity um, is also the next stage uh, in, the, in the process. And one thing that I heard uh, and this, this sometimes is not easy to hear, but this topic isn't easy at all. Not it easy is, at all. Quite often, the issue of race is put as a, oh, this is a, a black problem, or it's right, an right. indigenous problem. But someone say, why don't we reframe that and say, you know what, this is a, a Caucasian problem. Mm -hmm. And until the uh, uh, Caucasian community sees it as their problem, it won't be able to change it. So yep. once everyone takes ownership of this issue, um, like you've been saying, you've been doing and using your privilege, only then can we begin to actually move forward. Um, so, you know, and this space you've given me to talk about this is one of those ways. So thanks for that. Yeah, you're, yeah, and I, I learned a lot. Uh, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission uh, published a report and it was like, I don't know, I probably got it wrong, but I think it was hundreds of ways that you could uh, support and help with truth and reconciliation. And I mean, some of those ways were literally like go to your local First Nation office, band office and just ask how you can help. And yeah. so, I mean, I totally agree. It's about the action now. 
Uh, I think there's plenty of awareness. People just need to, to make a choice on where they want to stand and how they want to reflect about their upbringing and how they, like you said, they want to, to unlearn and, and relearn. And I know we're getting in uh, lots of lots of comments from people. Uh, thanks, Ethan. Yes, very important initiative. Not only will I be getting my family out for the walk around, we'll be raising money. This that's great. So you can donate awesome. at uh, yegdisasterdash.ca. And like I said, for every comment, I'm donating a dollar. So please, please donate. Uh, can participants collect donations? Sure, why not? Collect and submit on behalf? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, you know, as uh, as many donations as we can get. I think that's from Peron, from pronouncing that right. Yeah. Um, yeah, totally. Uh, what we hope to do, you know, as this becomes more established, is have more ways to, to, uh, to donate. Um, you know, sometimes when you sign on to run, you can get other people to sponsor you. Uh, we just didn't have enough time to set all those things up. Uh, but definitely, uh, Peron, please send the link out uh, to as many people. Or if you collect, you can do a lump sum donation. That would be greatly appreciated. Like, yeah, they're only looking, the, the goal right now, you know, if they can get $2,000 in this year, fantastic, 10 grand would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, I, I know, I, I think that's quite doable, um, personally. And and I wanted to touch on, Tobias brought up a point too, uh, on the other side of things about absolutely, uh, there's not enough scholarship sponsor programs for EM right now. And what else helps with promoting these programs and what connections or access is missing? Um, that's a fantastic question. That's a great question. I'm not sure I can uh, answer, you know, to no. the depth I'd, I'd love to, but I do agree as somebody who, who, who did recently go to school uh, for um, emergency management and was looking for financial support, uh, looking at, you know, different scholarships, et cetera, um, we could use many more. I know in the US, there seems to be a wider variety, uh, but in Canada, we could do a lot more. Um, and I know the field is um, young in relation to, you know, more traditionally established uh, fields, but as we go forward, it'll be great to see you know different organizations come together, uh, do something similar like this. I would say what we're doing today is kind of grassrootsy. Yeah, <laughs> um, it, it'd be great to see larger companies establish uh, programs, uh, establish bursaries and scholarships as we go forward. Yeah, and I and I like that you've you're working with Nate on this because they've always been ahead of the curve. Like Jody's program has always been ahead of the curve in emergency management, disaster management. And so, you know, this is just one example of where, where Nate is taking this profession, right? By allowing these to partner with a grassroots group coalition yep. like yourself and, and Rosemary to promote this idea uh, because this is another way that white, Canadian Caucasians can step up with their privilege and donate money to support this cause. So it's just another example of how to do that. And, and I, I, yeah, I'm just, I'm very, I was very excited to hear that you were leading the charge on this because, <laughs> uh, you know, you, you came from the ranks, you know, you started at AEMA, you moved up through your master's you worked uh, on the pandemic planning team. You've you've done GIS work. Like you've done a, a quite a bit of work, and now you're <laughs> the manager for rapid response at the Red Cross. Like that's been a very good career in a short time. And I think you being able to uh, develop a program like this just shows that evolution in in how you're progressing through your career. So like fantastic. Thanks, Brad. I I do think you know there is a bit of Hundred dollars, hundred dollars. We we we're every on the way. comment. The comments coming One dollar <laughs> every comment we get. Hundred um, percent. While we're we'll at that, I want to give a shout out quickly here. Uh, Ethan, uh, we're in class together with Ethan as well. Okay, and, uh, yeah. Ethan has been uh, in the background, also helping out uh, with uh, with some of the work uh, around this. Uh, I see uh, my wife commented there, uh, Demetria. Uh, she also oh, works. Oh, did she? Oh, AMA. is that her? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, she works for AMA, and uh, we share an office. Uh, she's usually sitting right next to me right now, but uh, she thought she would oh, work okay. in different rooms so that we avoid echoes. <laughs> oh, does she work at AEMA too in recovery? 
Yes, uh, she just started yeah. AMA about three months ago. Ah, okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Right on. And so, you know, wow. it's fantastic seeing uh, family, seeing friends, seeing community uh, come around this, uh, this initiative. You, you two must have the most well-prepared house in North America. <laughs> we we do have our 72 hour kit. Uh, it's right by the door. Uh, and uh, I've got awesome. a, a, a USB with all my important documents in there. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you probably have lots of insurance too. Uh, not you that have much. Insurance, man. Oh, no. <laughs> I do. We do I mean, we do have insurance, but I yeah. would say it's like over the top. <laughs> Okay, so D Demetria is spamming the comments with single <laughs> words now because that was one, two, three, four, five, six comments she's done. So that's six dollars. That's awesome. That is fantastic. Okay, that's that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead. That's hilarious. So if you're just tuning in, uh, we're on live uh, with Chaka from YEG Disaster Dash. It's a virtual run that aims to raise funds to establish a bursary for Black and Indigenous students in their first year of disaster and emergency management at the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology. And so if you want to visit the website and donate, uh, just head over to YEG Disaster Dash. There's a donate button up at the top and you can uh, either donate as an organization or an individual. And they have partnered with, let's give another plug to your partners because they're doing an awesome uh, awesome service to the community. Uh, we don't want to forget them. So please, please come on and donate for this cause. Awesome. Thank you. So what uh, what else can people do? So what else do we want people to do? We want them to go to the website, donate, splash yes. things up on their social media, email their friends and family, collect donations, uh, and and they can submit a donation. Uh, even if, if they're not able to donate right now or or get out to, to find funding, at least just participate in the exercise. Yeah. It's good exercise. It's good okay. exercise. Uh, we all need it. You know, uh, the uh, the uh, lockdown shut us in our houses for a long time. And <laughs> I, 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 for one, did feel the impacts. I wasn't doing as much exercise as I as I you know, would have liked to. Um, yeah. But in uh, Edmonton right now, we're having a beautiful fall. Um, yes. And so no excuse. No excuse. No excuses at all. <laughs> no excuse. Um, yeah. The other thing that we're trying that it's, we are kind they of they keep spamming the comments. These guys. It's I see that. I see your, that. That's your awesome. wife has started something. Okay. Keep going. Sorry. <laughs> um, I just want to also say, you know, um, uh, in as much as I'm spearheading this uh, spearheading this initiative, uh, I do have a team of people. Uh, yeah. Who, let's hear um, who's on the team. Let's hear about them. Yeah. So top of my head, uh, you know, um, uh, Chris Chris Lamman. Uh, yeah. Chris uh, currently works for Calgary Emergency Management Agency, yeah. and uh, he's been working in the background to spread the word there. Um, okay. uh, there's a lady called Eni, uh, who works for the city of Edmonton. She's doing her bit there as well. Um, uh, Sarah, Sarah Pullen works for um, the University of Calgary, um, okay. also used to work for AMA. Um, I've talked about Ethan being in the background. Rachel Oliver as well has been helping out in the background. Um, we also have, of course, our partners uh, from Cash. So Sandra uh, is the uh, executive director for the Council for Canadians of African and Caribbean Heritage. Okay. Uh, and she's been uh, also working with us, providing us with some advice. And in fact, she was, you know, we've been modeling the idea of having this being embedded into their ongoing programming for sustainability. Oh, awesome. Um, so that's also a, 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 you know, uh, an avenue we're exploring in order to have this be sustainable and really move it from a grassroots initiative into uh, something more formal as we as we go forward. Um, yeah, and I, I would also encourage, like if you're listening in from an, another city or another province, like why not replicate this for your own community? Uh, you you don't have to you know you it would be nice to use Nate but you there's other emergency management programs out there that I'm sure would take uh, donations and yeah. and help set up bursaries so yeah if, if you've got contacts in another city uh, have them visit yegdisasterdash.ca and reach out to to the team yeah. uh, in in a way to replicate this program for other communities. Imagine if October 14 was like disaster dash day across across Canada 
and we had you know people doing disaster dashes within their communities for their communities Absolutely. um all across the country that would be fantastic that would that's a fantastic idea so you've got to you've got to start that hashtag and i would just declare uh, i would just declare it anyway who you don't you don't yeah. need to for that like De declare it anyway later catch on Where's where's the Edmonton of Mayor? He should be declaring today uh, <laughs> Disaster Dash Day or October 14th is Disaster Dash Day. Yeah, that's a good call. You know, maybe we should uh, tag him. Um, are you, do you usually call, um, um, post the videos afterwards, right? On, on yeah, your, I can post this LinkedIn? afterwards. Yeah, we'll do we'll do it up on YouTube and and we'll send the link out. Yeah, and, I'll, I'll send it to uh, Mayor Don Iverson and uh, see yeah. what it says. <laughs> yeah, minute uh, 3645 is where we start talking about it. Awesome. So, yeah. So keep the comments rolling in. I'm I'm donating, or Hazardscape Management is donating a dollar for every comment that comes in. Um, I have a feeling I'm just going to donate the hundred dollars anyway. But uh, <laughs> if if you want to keep rolling the comments in, please do so. Uh, awesome. Awesome. That that would be very helpful. So I don't know what uh, what else what else about the event that you want to want to promote or talk about. Yeah. So, did we um, miss that, anything? Uh, the two things. Um, there's one idea that uh, we have been uh, working on, uh, and that's potentially to have a bit of a of a Zoom call um, oh, yeah. pre-event, pre um, and we'll likely send out the invitations uh, today to those who signed up. The idea being that you know, if we were uh, there, if it was physical, we would have seen each other. Um, but if we have right. a Zoom call, we can have we call it a bit of a warm up. You know, we get a little bit excited about the event. Um, get a chance to thank our sponsors again. Uh, yep. A little bit of you know uh, semi formal networking, uh, and then the next day we all go out and um, and, and 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 do the run. Uh, Great idea. That's definitely something that we're working on in the background right. as well. Um, the second thing is the question of why. Why do this at all? And we've mm -hmm. checked on, on it a little bit, but I'd like to just bring us back to it because sure. I was asked this yesterday. Um, I was on the CBC talking about this and they asked me yep. the question of, of why. Um, right now, we are seeing um, out of the US, uh, you know, information around how COVID has uh, disproportionately impacted uh, black communities and other communities of color when compared to um, white, white Americans. Mm -hmm. um, what I have seen in, 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 in the U.S. is they collect a lot of data. Um, in Canada, unfortunately, we seem to not collect a lot of race-based data. Um, there is, uh, I did have a discussion, uh, and I, I can't go too much into depth about this because it was during my time when I was working uh, within the government, but, you know, it, getting information, race-based data is just challenging for a number of legal, ethical um, reasons. But there has to be a way around that. Mm -hmm. um, if we aren't able to collect this data, then we aren't able to actively look at what the problems are and, and, uh, and develop solutions um, for these problems. So there are some community groups uh, within Edmonton uh, and within Toronto that have started doing their own community-based research yeah. in order to try and mine this data out. And they're seeing similar trends. They're seeing that uh, Black and Indigenous communities are struggling more um, Absolutely. For, for a number of various reasons. And this brings me back to that question of why. Um, having representation in this field from people from racialized communities allows us to, and, and you mentioned this, have a whole of society approach mm -hmm. um, to, to disaster and emergency management. I almost view it as an extension of risk reduction, really. Um, if you look at the broader picture of what emergency management is, uh, I think this is a, a risk reduction in action um, by providing opportunities for people to move through this field um, and eventually get into positions of influence where they can influence decisions, where they can um, talk about their uh, lived experiences, uh, where you know we can um, engage with our political leadership, um, and we're coming in from the perspective of people who are trained, educated, subject matter experts, not only in the field but within our communities. And I think for me, that's the bigger picture of why. What we're doing is maybe one small piece of the pie, 
but this is a challenge to the entire emergency management field uh, to then look at what they can do within their pieces of the pie uh, to move this along. Yeah, okay, that's great that you gave us that background because that that's really important. And the you know, you are definitely this is definitely playing some role in the the reduction of risk. Mm -hmm. And I know there's uh, newly formed groups out there, organizations like Future Skills Canada that are looking to help uh, Indigenous, Black, other areas or groups of society that are, are marginalized in helping them develop skills for the future, especially on the technology side. Yeah. And, and I think there needs to be a lot more work done on uh, disaster risk reduction literacy, science literacy, all, all those core competencies that were uh, researched and established under the, uh, the FEMA recommendations for next generation core competencies. So yeah, I definitely see this feeding into that future yeah, totally. skills development uh, for sure. And I think you've got, I don't know if, if these are family members. Yeah, yeah, that is my uh, sister. Uh, who, uh, that's your sister. Few, that's my sister, she's people away from me um and okay. uh she actually um is the program manager for the alberta council for global cooperation i think i mentioned the conference they put on just two weeks ago that was a part of around learning and un unlearning and relearning racism oh she's part of, okay so she's with that group okay well she yeah. just uh did a facebook and a linkedin comment so that yeah. that's giving us two dollars towards our hundred dollar goal so awesome. uh, Thank thanks you. Room, Roombi, is it? Okay, hi, Roombi. Thank yeah, you for yeah. here. Here's what Del. She she's got. That's her. That's that's her picture on LinkedIn, and uh, that's that's her. I hope that was her wedding. Is that her yes, wedding? That was her wedding. She, yeah, that is she her keep wedding. random people's wedding pictures on her Facebook profile. <laughs> that's her wedding. Okay, no, awesome. That is that is a wedding in uh, Zimbabwe. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. that that's her husband. Yes. Yes. Okay. Who, who's her husband? <laughs> Who's her husband? Uh, his, his name is Alan. <laughs> Where's Alan? He's got to yeah. lay down a comment so we can get our hundred dollars here. Hey, Alan, All yeah, right. Hey, for you. Go get Alan. <laughs> and that that's interesting. So um, the Edmonton Public School Board is collecting data, race mm -hmm. uh, and gender data. Recently, they announced that. Good. And good. so. You know, I know you you don't you you don't like to say too much maybe about the government because you you've just gotten out of it, but I'll say anything I want about the government. So um, I yeah, I I would I would agree they're probably not not collecting that type of data in a way that's meaningful. Uh, they may collect it through public relations polling or public relation communication surveys, but I don't think they share the type of data that mm -hmm. they they get in a meaningful way uh and certainly not with you know groups that are looking to reduce risk and and other other things uh where that data could be really important uh yeah, it's, I mean, it'll help you, it'll help yeah. make decisions it's going to help make decisions yeah, exactly if you can't see it it doesn't exist but that's not what we want <laughs> yeah because it like i mean i don't know what is the black population in alberta yeah. So I mean, do we do we even um, know? Do we have I, any idea? Do you think? I don't know. Personally, I don't know. I think there is some information out there. Yeah. Uh, okay. But I'm not. I'm not sure if this information, like you're saying, is collected in a way that we can actually make use of it and to have positive impact. I am aware yeah. of some of the sensitivities and challenges that come with collecting data. I'm also aware that some sure. of our communities are resistant to uh, to having their data collected because of, like you mentioned, historical trauma and uh, you know previous uh, negative experiences with uh, government administrations. Um, so there has to be a lot of trust building that needs yes. to go into this. Uh, there's a lot of concerted effort uh, so that we are able to yes. collect this information in a way that yeah, possible. and 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 our you know our our politicians right now are not doing a great job of developing trust under that banner. I mean, there's so much going on out there right now that not only the misinformation and and other things like that, but I mean, yeah, there trust building takes a long time, but mm -hmm. I don't know if we're doing that great of a job of it yet. 
You know, uh, my my former uh, ED in recovery branch, I'll give him a shout out, <laughs> Brad Geddes. Oh, yeah. Brad uh, Geddes, yeah. He, he, he always told me, you know what? We can only move at the speed of trust. Right. Um, and that's that's a phrase that's kind of stuck with me, um, you know, for, for a long time. And it's so true. Um, yep. Developing trust is t- it takes a long time. It's hard, but it's necessary. Breaking trust or ever happens quickly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so... Um, I I think this, you know, the the disaster dash, uh, I I think it's like it says, removing barriers and opening doors. Mm -hmm. Like what a what a great way to kind of talk about how you're you're stepping up with the, the group that you're working with to create that trust through a common experience, building a community. Uh, Emergency management disaster risk reduction is all about community development. Yeah, and and I think this is a great example uh, of of what you're doing to to do that. So, congratulations, and I think I think it'll take off. And so, just a, a quick reminder: we've got uh, yeg disaster dash uh, right here. ca. Please go there and donate. They're on Instagram, right? We can pull up their your Instagram account, Chaka yep. Chaka. Uh, did did do the art with the use of Canva. So he's putting his artistic skills to this. So just getting started. So please follow them on Instagram, visit their website and, and contact your family and friends, donate some money. So Rachel Oliver, thank you, is sending another comment and money our way. Awesome. Thanks, Rachel. You, you might as well put in another comment right now because then that'll, <laughs> that'll just keep it going. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll, we'll donate the hundred dollars today, regardless of the comments and, uh, Thank you so and much, support Brad. this cause. So anytime you want to come back, let me know. Uh, we, we can do a follow-up on, you know, the success you've achieved. We can get ready for next year. Yeah. You know, yeah. let me, let me know how, uh, Hazardscape live can support you. And I'm fantastic. sure, I'm sure, you know, go to the comments, look up all these people here. Uh, that's we're, we're expanding your network of other emergency management professionals that look like they're willing to, to help out. To help out that completely. Um, you know, I'm really grateful, uh, for you reaching out. Uh, and, uh, I do think one other idea I have maybe in the long run is to couple the dash with the panel discussion. Uh, imagine if we were to have maybe four or five panelists, awesome. uh, and get involved with that and. We can uh, have a panel discussion, you know, maybe pre-dash or after the dash. Meet some of the recipients of the uh, of the bursary. Yep. For this year, um, and hear the yeah, stories. Yeah, whatever you want. I can have up to uh, I can have up to ten people on here, and oh, we great. can do we can stream it live over Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. Uh, we could even do Twitch if if we wanted to get going on Twitch, and and some of those okay. things. Periscope, even we could do it off Twitter. Periscope. Uh, whatever you want, let me know. Oh, fantastic. There's endless possibilities. And, you know, I'm endless. really grateful for this. Yeah, thanks so much for having for having us and being able to talk about the Dash. You're welcome. Well, I'm glad you could stop by. And I'm thank you to everybody out there who has commented uh, word by word. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And uh, thanks for tuning in to Hazardscape Live. Uh, from Chuck and I, stay connected. Very important. And uh, we will we will be back later to give an update on how we did. Take care, everybody. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Brad. Cheers.